worm reads, eh, eh, eh. I reads, eh, eh, eh. Angie the inchworm will climb up a hill. Oops, a bird. Angie stays still. Inchy inchworm. Inchy inchworm was an inchworm. Inchy inchworm traveled by moving his body section by section and inch by inch. It was a pretty good way to travel. Inchy inchworm always got where he was going, but it seemed slow to Inchy inchworm. Inchy inchworm really admired Itsy Bitsy Cricket. Itsy Bitsy Cricket could take big, long hops and cover distances that took Inchy inchworm a long time to travel. I want to jump like you, Itsy Bitsy Cricket, said Inchy Inchworm. Yes, you really move slow, Inchy Inchworm, said Itsy Bitsy Cricket. Well, sooner or later I can get just about anywhere, agreed Inchy Inchworm. But it would be such fun to jump and hop as you do. Too bad you can't, little Inchy Inchworm. Watch me hop to the other side of that big rock. In one big swoop, Itsy Bitsy Cricket disappeared from Inchy Inchworm's view. Oh, how I want to jump, moaned Inchy Inchworm. All I can do is inch, inch, inch along an inch at a time. Just about that time, Inchy Inchworm noticed a bird flying to the limb of a nearby tree. Oh, I'd better be still, Inchy Inchworm thought. That bird looks hungry to me. I think he'd love to have an inchworm for lunch. Quick as a wink, Inchy Inchworm flattened himself out and stayed perfectly still. Itsy Bitsy Cricket at that instant came hopping back. Itsy Bitsy Cricket was really showing off a little because Itsy Bitsy knew Inchy Inchworm wanted to be able to hop like him. Not only was Itsy Bitsy Cricket jumping extra high, but he was making a lot of noise. Look at me! Look at me! I jump high as a tree! Itsy Bitsy Cricket sang out as he jumped back and forth around Inchy Inchworm. Do you suppose Itsy Bitsy Cricket doesn't see that bird? Inchy Inchworm wondered. That bird just might like a cricket lunch. Itsy Bitsy Cricket, you'd better look out! yelled Inchy Inchworm. Suddenly, there was a swoop from the nearby tree and a whirring of feathers. Inchy Inchworm closed his eyes tightly and stayed as still as possible. When he opened them again, there was no cricket to be seen. Itsy Bitsy Cricket was gone! Even though Inchy Inchworm was saddened to lose his friend, he sighed. Phew, it's a good thing I can't hop. I guess inching along is a pretty good way to travel after all. It's better to be me inching along and doing things just the way God made me. Bible Story God asked Moses to do a big, big job. He told him to lead God's people out of Egypt. Moses loved God, and he wanted to do what he said. But he did not feel very sure that he could do it. Moses was keeping sheep one day in the desert, and suddenly he saw a bush that looked as if it was on fire. Moses saw an 
angel in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. Then he noticed that the bush burnt with fire but was not consumed. God called Moses out of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. Moses said, Here am I. God said, Don't come any closer, Moses. Take off your shoes because you are standing on holy ground. I am sure Moses was frightened. Then God's voice continued, I am the God of your father and of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses was so afraid that he covered his face. He was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have seen how my people are being mistreated in Egypt, for I know their sorrows. I am going to deliver my people out of this land of Egypt and take them to a good land. Come, Moses, and go to see Pharaoh for me. I am going to use you to lead my people out of Egypt. Moses feared Pharaoh because Moses knew that Pharaoh would not want the people of Israel to leave Egypt. Moses began thinking of his own weakness rather than remembering the strength and power of God. Who am I, Moses said, that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? God said, I will be with you. Moses thought about that, and he knew that if God were with him, he could do what God wanted him to do. Moses asked God, When I come to the people of Israel and tell them you sent me, what will I say? God answered Moses, You must say, The God of your father sent me to you. And they will say to me, what is his name? What will I say then? Asked Moses. And God said to Moses, I am that I am. That is what you must say to them. Say to the people of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. God told Moses how the king of Egypt was not going to let the Israelites go until after God performed wonders. God, Moses said to God, But behold, they will not believe me or listen to me. They will say, The Lord didn't really appear to you, Moses. God gave Moses three signs that Moses could show the people of Israel if they did not believe that the Lord had sent Moses. One of the signs was that God turned Moses' walking stick into a snake and then turned it back into a walking stick. Still, Moses was fearful. Boys and girls, you know how sometimes you want to say something and it just doesn't come out right? You know what you want to say but you can't think of the right words? That is what Moses thought would happen to him. Moses said, Lord, I am not a good speaker. I am slow of speech and my tongue doesn't work right. Then the Lord said a wonderful thing to Moses. Moses, who made man's mouth? Moses knew that God made his mouth. Who makes one person not able to talk, or another person not able to hear, or another person not able to see? I, the Lord, am the one who gives the ability to talk or see or hear. I can give you exactly what you need. Now go, and I will be with your mouth, and I will tell you exactly what to say. The Lord finally sent Moses' brother with him to help him speak. 
But God said one more time, I will be with your mouth and with his mouth, and I will teach you what you shall do. Finally, Moses realized that God just wanted Moses to depend on God, trusting God to care for him. God did care for Moses, and Moses did lead the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Just as Moses could not fail when he did what God wanted him to do, neither can you fail when you do what God wants you to do.